Hi. People who worship Yahweh, at least in Christian circles, do so in an attempt to gain immortality. They want to live forever in heaven. And if you tell them that the Bible isn't based on fact, they tell you that you're trying to take away their hope. So my question is, their hope of what? The prevailing belief system, based on the New Testament, is that believers in Yahweh and Jesus go to heaven when they die, and unbelievers go to a burning hell to be tortured forever and ever. That is the hope to which these Christians refer, a world where they enjoy a privileged life, dwelling in a mansion and walking on a street of gold, while many of their ancestors and offspring suffer unfathomable pain in a dark pit. Suffering brought on by the very God that these Christians are prostrating themselves to and praising and adoring. Think about that for a minute. I mean, I know they'll tell us that the people in hell had a choice. Well, <laughs> yeah, and I have a choice to give a man with a gun to my head all of my money. So if I don't and he shoots me, I guess I deserve it, right? And the thing is, I see the man. I know he exists. If I don't give him my money, I know I'm going to die. Where is the God of the Bible to tell me anything? Am I just supposed to take the word of Christians? Or what some ancient people who didn't know why a rainbow appeared in the sky wrote in their annals so they could control the masses? Stories that, if the truth were known, may have been written when the authors were high as a kite on some plant. Not that there's anything wrong with that. If Yahweh's real, and I don't believe for a minute that he is, then the truth is that he did an amazing job of hiding himself from us. Not a single person alive has seen him or heard a word from him. All we have are contradictory texts declaring that he exists. But we have documents claiming the, exist the existence of other gods as well. But most of us ignore the manuscripts that we weren't raised on and cling to the ones we were. Oh, I know. They found bones of giants. So that means the Bible is true because it mentions giants. Well, I went to New York State and I found queens. So that means Spider-Man is real. And I lived in Dayton, Ohio for almost a year. So I know that the Incredible Hulk is real. So what if some of us dis disbelieve in Yahweh? And so what if we even deserve to be punished for it? Let's say some do deliberately choose to disbelieve, if that's even possible, and that they deserve hell. Does that really make a difference? Let's imagine it's Hitler burning in hell. Everybody loves to invoke his name in situations like this. Could you be lounging around in heaven, adoring and worshiping Yahweh and Jesus while they tortured Hitler in a manner that no creature should ever have to endure? For crying out loud, some of us can't kill a mouse or a spider. And you're so bereft of compassion that you think it's okay to torture humans? for all eternity? I know you dislike Hitler, so let's get a little closer to home. Think about your son or daughter. Let's make it a daughter. Imagine that your daughter experienced a brutal rape as a child. Later she married and her husband beat her mercilessly. Eventually he murdered her only child, a beautiful little two-year-old boy. In a fit of rage, your precious daughter took a knife and thrust it deep into her husband's heart. Now, she's not going to heaven for any, um, to hell for any of that. Your sweet daughter simply reached the end of her rope. Her sin is not murder. She's going to hell because her God didn't keep her from being raped. Her God didn't keep her from being abused. Her God didn't keep her from losing her precious child. 
Oh, yeah, everybody told her that Yahweh was with her and he would see her through. Yes, yes, he would support her and comfort her in all her sorrow and pain. But she had seen herself that Yahweh does nothing to help anyone. He didn't keep her from being raped. He didn't stop her husband from abusing her. He didn't save the life of her child. So what? Now he's going to be Johnny on the spot to make her feel a little better about it all? She knew she had to do whatever it took to deal with the ache she felt every second of every minute of every hour of every day of her life. So your sweet daughter drank herself to death. She became one of those drunkards that end up in hell. So answer me, does she deserve it? Sure, some people survive and move forward in situations like this, but your daughter simply didn't. Anybody who could bear to worship a God who would burn people or even dogs or cats or rats is sick and certainly unworthy of a pleasant afterlife if anybody is going to be punished. And it's not just Hitler. No, all liars go to hell. The fearful end up there. Those who don't believe the Bible was penned by God dwell in hell forever. Thieves, covetous people, and yes, even alcoholics are consigned to hell. Let's keep going with this. Suppose your father is rich, I mean filthy rich, and he's getting old. While your sweet daughter is still alive, your father says to you, Look, I love you, but your disgusting daughter won't get a penny from me. But if you'll stay with me and take care of me till I die, I'll leave everything I have to you, with the caveat, of course, that that wayward daughter of yours gets none of it. Would you agree to this? Would you live in splendor while your own child struggled to make ends meet and suffered from alcoholism with no money to help her? Any parent who would do that would be despicable. Imagine that I said, and I would never, ever, ever say this, that Donald Trump deserved to get COVID-19 and even to die from it because he downplayed the virus, called it a hoax, said it would go away with warm weather, bragged about what a great job he was doing while our loved ones were dying, and showed no real concern for, these, for the suffering of others. Christians, at least Trump-supporting Christians, would be shocked and think I was a horrible person. Yet, saying someone deserves death you know, physical, biological death is nothing compared to what they believe their God will do to their child, their mother, their sibling, their friend, their neighbor, and yes, even their Trump, because they think they all deserve it. Many of these people believe that Trump is going to burn in hell, if only because he's living in adultery. And they plan to rejoice when it happens and praise the monster who lights the fire. Now tell me, what kind of fiend do you have to be yourself to even want to be in such a being's presence, let alone to worship him? I can hear it now, but that's different. It's not okay for a human to be that way, but it's okay for God. No! No, 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 no. The behavior is the same no matter who's doing it. Even if you murder someone in cold blood, your punishment shouldn't be horrendous torture. Even for the rest of your life, there's nothing you could do that would demand that harsh a punishment. And forever? Seriously? I know some say, perhaps it's not literal fire as if that makes a difference. Can you imagine living forever with mental torture? No, you can't because it's unimaginable. Besides, what's so great about heaven? I mean, 
other than the mansion or the street of gold, which Christians aren't supposed to lust after anyway, what will go on there? Will there be something to accomplish, some goal to obtain, a new love interest, wonderful food to discover, a mountain to climb, an adventure or surprise or reward of some kind other than just being there and being allowed to praise Yahweh? Not from what I can understand about the Bible. It seems to be simply a never-ending time loop Spending every day and every night in obeisance, because there's no sleep there. Maybe casting off our crowns and bowing down and crying, holy, 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 to Yahweh and his son. Why would anybody want that? Well, I mean, I know the answer, because we're deeply grateful for eternal life. But why are we grateful for an everlasting ego trip for Yahweh? Christians long to be in his presence and praise him, for granting them the right to be in his presence and praise him forever. This guy had his own son murdered to appease his own wrath for the mistake he made in making humans in a way that displeased him. He doesn't give a rat's tail about us. He's just calling out the weak who are willing to kowtow to him no matter how evil he is or was. If we get to heaven, it's not like we get to pull down our shorts and slide naked on the golden street. If we did that, we'd probably be cast out. Oh, right, right. The Bible says heaven will last forever. Seems like I read that same kind of language somewhere in the Old Testament regarding Yahweh's promises to Israel. I'll give you this land forever. You will keep this feast forever. The earth abides forever. My anger will burn forever. Well, that last one might be true. <laughs> and that's another thing. Yahweh's not a sweetheart who looks kindly upon our mistakes. He's always angry about something. One little blunder, and he's liable to just throw us out and cast us down to hell. And why wouldn't we eventually slip up? Angels have free will in heaven, and they rebel. There's been war in heaven. And we're supposed to be like angels when we get there, right? Seems to me there might be some disagreement, maybe some fussing and fighting. Nobody in his right mind would want to go to this eternal praise fest for this God, volatile God who is burning his or her family members. So I've concluded that the only real reason anybody wants to be considered worthy of heaven is to avoid hell. Obviously, none of us want to be tortured, especially forever. I mean, this is, unless, of course, we think we'll be robots without the ability to think. Will we just robotically bob our heads up and down, constantly putting forth that same tired mantra, holy, 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 forgetting that our loved ones are screaming in agony? I don't know why Yahweh would even want that, let alone why we would. Heaven sounds like the most dreary, mind-numbing, humdrum, and dull place we could ever imagine, as well as the most precarious. And if there is a hell, then heaven is certainly not a place one who cares about others should aspire to make his or her home. Can you imagine thanking and praising a benefactor who is constantly providing you with lobster and steak in your fancy mansion while the crippled and diseased are outside your door begging for food and medicine? No? Then how will you tolerate heaven if there are people in hell? I have to tell you, when I hear you going on about your hope of heaven, hear you crying, come quickly, Lord Jesus, and I know you also believe in hell, it sickens me. Your depravity, your immorality, your cold and evil heart, your lack of compassion, and your perverted sense of justice make me want to vomit, partially because I was once that self-centered myself. No, 
I was never one to beg or even want Jesus to hurry up and come. But I believed that when he did come, he would make me a ruler while he tortured even teenagers who had hardly done anything wrong, but they just hadn't given themselves to Jesus. And I worshipped him anyway. And yes, when I remember that, it makes me feel sick. If we want to hang on to some hope, maybe reincarnation for all would be a better option. We could look forward to a better life the next time around. Or maybe we could level up in some way, be a demigod on a planet of our own. But honestly, if my life just ends, I'm perfectly okay with that. As somebody said, I was okay before I was born, be okay after I die. But I know one thing for sure. If, when I denounce the evil and perverted idea that some have, the heinous plan for humanity that they believe their perverted God concocted, if by denying that I take away their hope of expecting Jesus to come and reward them while he tortures others, that person's hope is misplaced, and he may be just a tiny bit narcissistic. Furthermore, any God that would come up with such an evil scheme deserves to burn in that hell himself. The takeaway here is that if you plan to rejoice and praise a devilish entity who you believe plans to burn most of the people who ever lived, or even one person, for all eternity, and my words can remove that evil hope from your heart or even put a dent in it, then I'm delighted to hear that. I will happily listen to you accuse me of trying to take away your hope all the live long day. Thanks for watching. Bye.